Hi, this is Jeff from Hybrid Automotive. I want to make a video today to show you two things. Uh, first thing is how to use the Honda bolt and washer kit that's included with each Prolong Pro Thunderbolt system and how to install that onto a Honda battery. Today we're going to do it on a Insight Gen 1 battery. And second thing is how to connect the Thunderbolt system to any battery that we don't have instructions for. So how to identify where to connect the individual module voltage monitoring connectors on a battery pack, how to go through a battery and do that. So the first thing we have to do for this Insight battery is we have to remove the, uh, I call it the junction board, but this whole assembly off the side. And then here on the back as well, we're gonna remove the end cover. The Honda batteries have the M6 by one bolts, but they are recessed within the battery. And so this is what the bolt and spacer kit is for so that we can extend these out above this surface and be able to make our electrical connections. So we are gonna remove the cover and then get started. Once we've removed the junction board, you will notice a couple things. There are some spacers and bolts that will come off of that. You can set those to the side. You also want to pay attention to the ground. Module numbering always starts with the battery pack ground. So when charging, the ground connection is here on the top of the battery. Wherever that is on the battery you're working on, you wanna start with that ground connection and in this case, we have to follow it through the junction board. And so it comes across and goes through here to the top of these three connection points. So we can look at the battery and see that we have the same three connection points. So the top is going to be right here. So this is the ground for the entire battery pack. And that's where we're going to start making our connections. To begin making those connections, you'll need your Prolong car harness. We're gonna take the ground wire from the Prolong car harness and we're gonna use the bolt and washer kit. We're gonna get one bolt and one washer, as you see here, insert the bolt through the Prolong car harness negative or black charging wire, use the spacer, and then go ahead and connect that to the battery pack. So this is going to be the ground of the battery. So the stick or module behind here running across is going to be module number one. So we can go ahead and make the connection on the back side of our module number one voltage monitoring wire. Okay, here we are on the back side of the battery and we can see that we've made the module number one connection here using the spacer provided to ensure that we're above the recess part and we've connected harness number one. So now to identify module number two, it is going to either be the one right next to it because there would be a copper bar connecting them this way or the one below if there was a copper bar connecting this way. And this is how you're going to identify batteries that we don't have instructions for by starting with module number one and then measuring with a voltage meter all the way through the battery pack. So we can put our voltage meter ground here and then measure on the far side of the battery on this one to see if we can measure approximately seven, eight volts for module number two or down here at the bottom to see which one or if there was another one here, which there's not, which one of those positions would be the next module or stick in the chain. Okay, so now we're ready to make that test to identify where module number two is located in this battery. You can see I have a meter set to voltage. So I'll place my ground side at the top 
of module number one that we've already connected, and I'll take my high side of my probe, and I'll look at the module directly below, to the right, or to the left. So I'll start with below, and I can see that I have 88 volts, which is definitely not the voltage I would expect from one single module. If there was one here, I would check there as well, and there's not. So now I'll check here, and we can see I have 8.12 volts, which is what I would expect from a six cell module. So that tells me that this module here next to number one is two. So this is number one, and this is number two. So now I will put my module number two voltage monitoring connection right here. You can repeat this process all the way through the battery to identify module three, four, five, six, and all the way through until all the modules in the battery have been connected. Okay, so I've got the first half of the battery done. I did 10, then I did 11 on the back, and I'm able to start seeing the pattern. So I also actually did 13 on the back, but now I've got this, this break here in the battery, and I didn't talk about this before. So on this particular battery pack, this is these two connector points here, and what those do is they run through a large fuse, and they actually come up to the battery on-off switch. So this is the safety that splits the battery in half electrically. So what I would recommend for this would be to get a couple wires with uh, bullet connectors, like what you can see here. So you can have it open and have the open circuit and the safety. And then when it is time to go ahead and start charging the battery, you can go ahead and connect them, just like effectively turning this switch from off to on. You also may need to make some voltage monitoring connections to these. So I need to connect number 12 right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, here's a great example of what I was talking about earlier. You can see here, I've got the ring terminals on one end and the male and female bullet connectors or banana connectors on the other. So now I'm gonna go ahead and continue with the installation. I'm gonna leave these disconnected for now when I'm installing them on the battery and wait till we're all the way done and then I'll connect them at that point. Okay, for the final connection to module number 20 at the top of the battery, we need to make sure to connect the charging harness as well as the voltage monitoring harness, just like on any other battery pack that the Thunderbolt system is used on. The top of the battery is always the only place where we have two connectors, two ring, ring terminals used when connecting to the battery. 
it. So I can go ahead and make that connection. Once we believe we have all of the module voltage monitoring wires connected correctly, as well as the charging and discharging via the Prolong harness connected correctly, the final step is to verify that the system is able to see the module voltage. So to do that, we'll power on the Thunderbolt system, navigate to the settings menu, and then we'll press connect to the Thunderbolt system to make sure that the app is communicating to the Thunderbolt system. We'll go ahead and go over to the battery and connect our bullet connectors to complete the electrical circuit through the battery. And we'll scroll down to the bottom of the settings screen and click on module voltage test. This will show the voltages of every single module. What we're looking for, let me get the camera set right, what we're looking for is that we have all, in this case, 20 channels, and we have the approximate, or not the approximate, the exact voltage values for each battery. So what would be a sign that something is wrong is if we had a blank row where there was no reading, or perhaps we had a row that instead of eight, seven, eight volts, it had 16 volts. Well, that would mean that we have two modules connected uh, in one module voltage instead of one each. So once we are able to see that these are all reading correctly, and you can actually compare these with a multimeter to the, the individual modules, and you'll see that they're accurate to within a couple hundredths of a volt, then you know that the system is electrically connected to the battery properly, and you're able to begin using the Thunderbolt system on this battery. Thank you.